Tonight, I have, by request, am speaking this message, a message that I started to speak on Saturday uh, at the um, conference that I went to. I just gave a little blurb of this message, and I was asked by a couple of ladies from the church, Pastor, would you expand on this message because th the church needs to hear this message. So tonight, I have labeled the message, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Say it with me. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. I'm really hoping that everyone here and online that's watching us is really paying attention to these words and is really repeating these words from the bottom of their heart. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Amen? We're going to go to 1 Samuel chapter 3. The first 10 verses. Again, I'm limiting myself to the first 10 verses. I'd really like to read the whole chapter. <coughs> but we're going to limit ourselves to the first 10 verses because the first 10 verses give the whole picture. The rest of the story talks uh, about God speaking to um, Samuel and the prophecy that, um, that's, that will, is about to come to Ilya, or Eli, rather. So uh, starting with verse number one, I'm reading that from the NIV. You can read from any version you w you'd like. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The, the lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So when he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel, this is a very important verse. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time, the Lord called Samuel. Then Samuel got up, went to Eli, and said, Here I am. You called me. Then Eli realized that God, uh, that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then, then Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. On Saturday, I said something brand new, something that most of us don't think about, that there are pastors, there are leaders, there are bishops that have never heard the voice of God. There are people in the sanctuary, maybe not in the sanctuary, but in, there are people sitting in sanctuaries. There are people watching online. They have never heard the voice of God. There are people who don't even want to hear the voice of God. And this is probably the saddest part of being alive. Somebody who does not want to hear from the creator. Somebody who pushes the creator to the side. Somebody who thinks that they know better than the creator. That's a mistake. <coughs> I'd like to go through a few points here with you tonight. And I want to point out that you can be in the sanctuary. You could be watching online. You can be serving God from the pulpit. 
You can be serving God as the worship team. You could be serving God ev even as uh, a cleaning uh, individual. You can, you can be in the church of God, yet not have a personal relationship with God. Verse 1. This is uh, 1 Samuel chapter 3. Verse 1. The boy Samuel, underline that word with me, ministered before the Lord under Eli. He was there. He was part of the service. He was an essential part of the service. After all, it is said that Eli's eyesight was bad. So Samuel would have been the one doing uh, everything for Eli because Eli wouldn't be able to see. Uh, we all understand that, right? So Samuel was part, a crucial part of the service. Now let's jump to verse 7. I took some time uh, on this verse 7 in the, in the Saturday um, conference that we, we were at. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Now verse 1 tells us that he ministered before the Lord, and yet verse number 7 says he did not yet know the Lord. And the verse number 7 continues to say, the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. This is very common this is more common than we like to admit. This is more common than we'd like to even believe because we'd like to think, we'd like to understand that all of our children know the Lord. Amen? I'd like to say that my children know the Lord. After all, my children are on the worship team. My children are involved in ministry. My children, yet... There comes a time where every single one of us needs to hear the voice of God for ourselves, not just what our parents told us, not what the pastor told us, not what a preacher told us, but that we hear the word of the Lord ourselves. Samuel, go ahead. Mm. Yes, we'll, we'll hear the voice of God in our hearts. Amen. I like that. Samuel was involved with the worship service. You can be part of the church worship service and not know God. I'm going to say this one more time. You could be part of the worship service and not know God. You can be part of the worship team and not know God. For Samuel 2.18. I'm going to go back a chapter. But Samuel was ministering before the Lord. A boy wearing a linen ephod. The only people who were allowed to, to wear a linen ephod were the priests. He was considered a priest or a vice priest. Helper. He was ministering as a priest before the Lord with Eli. He was there. He was doing every part of the service. Yet this, this boy did not know the voice of the Lord. You can grow up in the presence of God and not know God. If you go down to verse 21, the last part of the verse says, the boy grew up in the presence of the Lord. You see that with me? The boy grew up in the presence of the Lord. This place may be filled with the Holy Spirit. This place is filled with God. But until you decide to hear God, it's just the presence that's here. It has to penetrate you. It has to be inside of you. You can be a pastor's kid and not know God. Yes, I'm talking to my children as well tonight. 
You can be a pastor and not know God. I'll talk to myself as well. You can be a bishop. You can be the highest office in the land and not know God. The, the, the scripture does tell us that Samuel was interested in God. Samuel was interested in knowing God. Why else would he be there? Yes, his mother made a promise to God that she would drop him off when he came of age, and that's what she exactly what she did. <clears throat> this was not a job for him. This was a calling for him. Yet, he did not know God. She was, his mother was a woman of prayer, yet he did not yet know God. Thank you, Demetrius. As we have read, he served, he saw, he was part of the service, yet he had no personal relationship with God. You cannot hear God if you don't want to have a personal relationship with God. You know, the other day, a couple of days ago, uh, I was meeting with a friend of mine, and uh, he claims to be a Christian, yet <clears throat> he's not ready to surrender his life to God yet. He says that he will one day surrender his life to God, just not yet. He believes he's even called into ministry, just not yet. And I asked him, dear friend, when is I'm ready yet? <laughs> and he says, Maybe when I get older, because serving God, that's what you do when you get old. I said, no. Serving God is what you do willingly. If you don't want to serve God willingly when you're young, when you get old, there's some bad habits that are harder to break. Somebody say amen. There's some more work that needs to be done on your behalf in order to serve God. If I don't want to hear God now, why would I want to hear him in heaven? Amen? If, if, you don't, if you don't want to spend time with God here now on earth, how would you like to spend an eternity with him? You want all the benefits of God, yet you don't even want to hear what he has to say. You can hear God speaking, but not even recognize that it's God who is speaking to you. Verse 4. First Samuel chapter 3, verse 4. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, here I am. You can hear God speaking through many different channels, through many different forms. As a matter of fact, Hebrews chapter 1, the first two verses says this. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in the last days, he has spoken to us by his son, Jesus, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom all also he has made the universe. God has spoken throughout the entire history of the world from the beginning, from creation, all the way to the very end, the, the end of the book of Revelation. God has spoken that already. And God is still speaking if we are listening. Somebody say amen. There are many different channels and different many ways, different forms that God speaks to us through. The Bible being number one. Somebody say amen. God speaks through the Bible. Each time I read the Bible, I'm getting something new out of it. I'm noticing things that I have never noticed before on my iPhone my iPhone is keeping track of my reading, and uh, since I've been keeping track of my uh, annual reading, I do uh, a Bible Bible in a year. I've 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 had I've tried different plans. So far, I have four. That means I have for four consecutive years, I have finished the Bible on my phone that it has been keeping track of. Obviously, I read the Bible many m more times than that, but my my. Bible app tells me that I have read the Bible at least four times from cover to cover. 
And each time I'm reading it, not even when I'm preparing a sermon or when I'm just reading for my daily reading, I'm finding something new, a new revelation of God. And many times I write it down and I preach it to you. And many times you say, wow, I never heard that before. I've never thought of this this way before because God is speaking through the Bible. You can hear God being spoken through preachers. Preachers speak the word of God, provided they are Bible-believing. Amen? Somebody say amen. Can I tell you that I've heard God speak through atheists? Yes. God used a donkey. I'm not going to use the other word. God used a donkey in the Old Testament. God speaks through prophets. God speaks through the sky. If you look at the, when you leave tonight, look up at the sky, you'll see the stars. God is speaking through that. God is speaking through the weather. God is speaking. Question is, are you listening? Genesis 1.14. And God said, talking about the lights, talking about the stars, let there be lights in the vault of the sky to, se to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years. God was speaking, God is speaking, and God will continue to speak. Somebody say amen. Question is, are you ready to say this with me? Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. If you're ready, say with me, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. You can hear God speak and run to the wrong source for the answer. You can hear God speak clearly. Samuel heard God speak clearly, yet he ran to the wrong source for the answer. Let's go back to 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 4 through 6. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, here I am. Pay attention. And ran to the wrong place. Sorry, Eli. And ran to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up, went to Eli and said, here I am. You called me, my son, Eli said. I did not call. Go back and lie down. He clearly heard the voice of God. You know, I've never heard the, an audible voice of God. That would be beautiful. I'm, to me, the voice of God would sound majestic. Somebody with me, amen? The voice of God, to me, would be powerful. The voice of God to me would move mountains. The voice of God would something like would sound something like this. It was silly. That would that would be majestic, amen. Grizel. I'm not gonna call everybody's name. And those of you watching online as well. That would sound majestic, amen. Amen. Absolutely. What would have happened if Eli did not understand that God was calling this young boy? What would happen if Eli did not understand that God himself was calling out to this boy? I, I don't know. I don't have an answer for you for that one. I'm glad he did, absolutely. Thank God he knew God. It's so important to have good, godly people, you could say mentors in your life, who will help you distinguish the voices around you, 
the voice of God for you and for your life and other voices that are not from God. Those other voices, they may be there to try to harm you. This is one of the reasons why Jesus said in John 10, 27, my sheep, listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. This is probably the most beautiful illustration about sheep. You know, sheep are not very bright animals. Anybody ever seen a sheep? Has anybody ever seen a smart sheep? No. Have anybody ever counted sheep? Have anybody ever counted a smart sheep? No. But for what, for what the sheep lack in their mind, they make up with their hearing. They hear the shepherd's voice. The sheep know the difference between their shepherd's voice and somebody else's voice. They know it very, very well. It's a proven fact. This is one of the reasons why many times in the Old Testament, you, f you find that um, the sheep were grazing together. Big, big places of she where the sheep would graze together. And then the shepherd would come and call out the, his sheep and they would go. And sometimes he would steal a few other sheep. They're not the brightest animals. What can I say? Yet Jesus says that my sheep listen to my voice, I know them, and they follow me. Can I talk to you about mentors? Sometimes we need mentors that can help us to learn, to recognize, to respond to God's voice. We all need good, godly people, mentors in our life, so we can distinguish between the voice of God, the voice of the world. It's sometimes those voices are so intermingled. I know we just went through this crazy election se cycle, season, whatever you call it. And I needed help to distinguish what voices were from God and what voices were from the world. Many Christians got entangled with either too far right or too far left and forgot that there is still a voice of God. This is one of the reasons why we need mentors who are walking with God, mentors who have walked where we are walking now to help us along. Let's go back to 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 8 through 9. A third time the Lord called Samuel, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So he told Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, Say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. If it wasn't for Eli, Samuel may have never figured out who was speaking to him, what voice was speaking to him, and how to respond to this voice. The Bible says that faith comes from hearing, and hearing the word of God, the voice of God. We need good, godly people who know how to hear God to spread the gospel, to help others, to mentor others, to help them along. Not just to say I'm a Christian, but to actually live as a Christian. See, Samuel heard the voice of God. He heard an audible voice of God, yet he did not know how to respond. He did not know who was calling him, 
and the closest person to him was Eli. So he left his nap time and he ran straight to Eli to discern what this voice was. And when he got to Eli, Eli said, I did not call you. Go relax. And for three consecutive times, he ran back and forth, back and forth. Now, this is dedication. For those of you who have children, can you call your children back and forth three times? Don't answer, don't answer, don't answer. Don't answer. <laughs> this is dedication. See, Samuel wanted to be in the house of God. Samuel wanted to be a servant of God. Samuel probably even wanted to hear the voice of God, yet he did not yet know God. He had the desire, yet he did not have the knowledge. And sometimes it's backwards. Sometimes we have the knowledge, but we have no desire. That's a totally different sermon. I probably preach it sometime this year. He heard the voice of God. He did not know how to respond to the voice of God. But he knew who would help him respond. Eli, his mentor, the man that was responsible for his well-being. There are so many passages in the Bible where God speaks to people and they're not sure how to respond. First one, Moses. Remember when Moses was standing in front of this burning bush? Remember that story? What ha God had to instruct Moses. Moses, hello, Moses, this land that you're standing on is holy ground. Take off your shoes. See, Moses did not have a mentor because Moses grew up with the Pharaoh. Somebody who, was, who did not know God, who, have ne who has never heard of God, who thought himself to be God. Moses had no ethics towards God. He saw this burning bush. You know, if I see something on fire... I'm going to look at it, and I'm probably going to walk away. Has, have, have you ever, any of you ever burnt a Christmas tree? My kids raising their hands, yes. How fast does a Christmas tree burn? Fast. How fast does a burning bush burn up? Fast. For real. Now, this burning bush was lit up. It was on fire. And it was not going out. This was a sight to see. My children probably don't remember, but one year we went down to my brother's house down in South Carolina, and they have gum trees. Have any of you ever uh, seen a gum tree? Do you know how fast a, a gum tree burns? It's impossible to get it on fire. But once you get it on fire, there's fireworks. It sparkling everywhere. You got to get it to a higher temperature. <coughs> Do you remember that? No, you probably don't remember that. You might remember that. Yeah. So th this burning bush is on fire and this attracts, this is God attracting Moses to come to him. And God had to teach Moses some ethics. Go ahead, Demetrius. No. Yes. No. No. It was. It was uh, the the the, tr uh, the ones that were throwing in, in the fire. They were kind of older, so I wasn't gonna take any risks. But I did hear that. Gideon. Gideon and his testing of God. Gideon heard of God. His father served the wrong God. 
Gideon was in the wine press squeezing olives, or uh, not olives, um, wheat. He was thrashing wheat. Gideon saw this, this man, and the first question he said, he asked him, are you for us or are you against us? Remember that story? And when God speaks to him and he's a little fresh, he says, God, you know what? I want everything wet but the cloth. God said, okay, I'll do that for you, no problem. God, I want everything dry but the cloth. I don't know how many times can you test God like that. I think it's better to hear the voice of God and follow the voice of God. And in order to, for that to happen, we need some good godly mentors in our life. Somebody say amen. Amen? Mentors who are good and godly will help us to distinguish between God's voice and the world's voice. Good godly mentors will help us to understand what the scripture says. Good godly mentors will help us understand what the pastor says. Good godly mentors will help us with our lives. Somebody say amen. If you are not mentoring somebody, you should be mentored. Somebody say amen. It's called discipleship. My last question for tonight. How do we respond to God's voice? How do we respond to God's voice? Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Here's a few, here's a few important things to remember. We first must come humbly before our God. See, Eli told Samuel, go lay down. Keep on doing what you were doing and wait. Can you imagine if Samuel was there anxious to hear the voice of God? Would God speak to him? I don't know. But everything that I read in the Bible talks about humbling ourselves in front of our God. And when we humble ourselves, then we can expect God to do something. Samuel could have stood there by Eli and just waited to hear the voice of God when Eli told him to go lie down. So the second part is we must be obedient servants. That's a tough word sometimes because we have to be obedient servants if we want to hear what God is saying. Because God hates, despises the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Those that humble themselves, not who God humbles, but those that humble themselves. When we get ready to hear the voice of God, when we surrender, when we humble, when we become obedient, I promise you this, God will speak. Verse 10, 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 10, the Lord came and stood there. The first part, the Lord came and stood there. The atmosphere had to be proper. God does not move unless the atmosphere is right. The atmosphere of our heart needs to be right. Calling as the other times. Samuel, Samuel. See, God comes and he stands. And when the atmosphere is right, then and only then does God speak. When the atmosphere is right, God is ready to speak. 
God speaks, our atmosphere needs to be right. Our atmosphere, the, the, the condition of our heart needs to be right. Because if we're not ready to hear the voice of God, he's going to pass by. I'm reminded of this song and it says, Savior, Savior, do not pass me by. When God speaks, it is our job to say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. For those of you who hear my voice tonight or wherever you are listening on the, uh, to this message, I'm praying that, that God touches your heart and that he changes your heart and real, it makes you realize that God is looking for those that are humble in front of him, those who walk humbly in front of him, those that are willing to obey him, those that are willing to become servants, those that are willing to lay down their life those that are willing to set up an atmosphere for God to move. Those that are willing to say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. As the team comes up. My final thought. If you have not heard the voice of God, humble yourself. Be obedient to his word. Start serving and say, Lord, speak for your servant is listening.